So with regard to energy efficiency, um, the two biggest things that we concentrate on is one, not putting ductwork into unfinished attic space. Uh, reason being, in the summertime, let's say it's 100 degrees out, and we're trying to cool the second floor down to, let's say, 72. Uh, when you have all that ductwork in 100 degree space, it is completely inefficient. So here what you're seeing on the second floor, and this is a little different than homes that were built, I would say as late as the 1990s, and for some builders they still build homes this way, but we run the HVAC system to the second floor between the first floor ceiling and the second floor floor. So, um, which is, so, so you'll notice over here, this is a floor register um, within the second floor. Uh, if you look here as another example, you'll see a floor register over here in this walk-in closet. And if you look up in the attic itself, you'll see there's no HVAC being run in the attic, again, to create an energy efficient home. So to discuss a little further about what's behind the walls in energy efficient homes, uh, the first thing to denote is when we have condition space and especially plumbing that's above an unconditioned garage, we first flash foam the floor system above. And you'll see the flash foaming within these duct bays. Below the flash foam will be bad insulation to create the R value. That flash foam is locking in uh, the condition space so that we don't get air exchanges or very minimal air exchanges between the condition space and the unconditioned space. If we move over going into the home, you'll notice um, supply and return ductwork. You'll notice the uh, dark, this is called mastic. So anywhere where there's a joint, the mastic is applied to the ductwork to ensure there's no air leakage. And you may say, well, how do we ensure there's no air leakage? Before we go into drywall, we pressure test all of our ducts to make sure the ducts don't leak. So we do the work, but then check and verify before we close in. As we come into the home, you'll notice um, the in the again in the 90s and even into the 2000s, builders were putting the supply and returns to the second floor up in the unconditioned attic. Uh, we've kind of turned this around where we're running all of our supplies and returns within condition space. So here's a, here's a good example. Um, you'll notice looking at this duct chase here in, within the closet, the ductwork comes up. Um, it branches out into the floor system. Uh, you'll notice the ductwork is coming, uh, running front to back. And you'll notice across the home, running side to side, the ductwork is between the first and the second floor. So what we're trying to do here, again, you can see the ductwork. What we're trying to do here is contain all the thermal energy between the floors within a conditioned space. Um, if we look over here, one of the one of the other things we do is um, we flash foam the band board between the first and the second floor so that when the air distribution uh, is occurring, so let's say it's, a sum it's summertime and we are blowing cool air, we don't want the air to leak out within the band board or within the perimeter of the floor system. So you see this flash foaming done. Eventually, over the flash foam will be bad insulation. But again, the flash foam is to lock in the air so we're not getting air exchanges to the outside. Uh, one way that we verify that our homes are tight, meaning not leaking air to the outside, 
is at the end of construction, we'll close all the doors and windows and we'll actually pressurize the home and verify how many air exchanges we have within a period of time. Um, and so that's got to meet our standards. There's a lot of other things besides flash foaming the band boards that we do to ensure a tight home, and we'll talk about that in another segment.